Hi, my name is Colin from hdcctv.co.uk. This video is about the new DVR from IQ CCTV. This is the IQR 1080D4H. The H stands for hybrid and it can now accept IP cameras, so we'll get to that in a second. So basically it's a uh, four channel unit. You've got four direct BNC input sockets here. This will accept AHD at 1080p and 720p as well as older cameras at 960H and D1 analog SIF, etc., the old stuff. Uh, but this will also accept IP cameras now. It's got, um, it's got capabilities to add uh, up to six IP cameras, not all at once, I'll explain that in a moment, um, but you can have up to six cameras total, so you can have a mix of analog and IP cameras. So how it works is the, um, the recorder's basically got an overall bandwidth available to it, and that bandwidth is 24 megabits a second. Each camera you add to the recorder takes some of that bandwidth. So if you've got four analog cameras, each one of those cameras takes four megabits a second. Four times four from 24 leaves eight megabits a second, and that's what you could have assigned to IP cameras. Now if you didn't need all four of the analog channels to be open, you could say uh, turn those off, and it gives then more bandwidth to the IP cameras. So an example of this would be if you've got two analog cameras, turn two off, that then frees up eight megabits a second to go to IP cameras, it means you could have either better cameras or more IP cameras. So as long as the overall bandwidth of 24 megabits a second isn't, uh, isn't exceeded, you can have up to six cameras. Now to control the recorder, some people like to plug them into a TV um, via the HDMI or VGA monitor socket and then directly control them either using the touch panel or you can use it with the uh, USB mouse and it will work with some of the remote mice, uh, wireless mice, not all of them, but some of them do work. Uh, you've also got a infrared remote control that comes with it and regarding remote control again, you can have, um, have this added to your network. You plug a Cat5 cable into the back plug it into your router box, set it up and it then becomes part of your network and you can then access it with any PC on your, uh, in your house, any Mac, uh, Apple Mac with the OS X. It also works with any Android, tablet or smartphone and any iOS device, so iPad and iPhone as well. The software is uh, really, really good. The mobile phone software lets you watch cameras live and playback recordings and the PC and Mac software gives you more control. You've got a uh, system configuration as well as live and, uh, and playback. The unit can take one hard drive inside. Uh, current firmware allows up to eight terabytes, that's maximum. When the hard drive becomes full, it then goes back and overwrites over the old files first. So you've always got a rolling period of time stored. You can set the recorder to record constantly or during motion only, and you have independent controls for each camera and also using the record scheduler, you can program it to do different modes at different times of day. So it's really, really flexible. It has a, a function called UTC. Now UTC stands for up the coax. And what this does, this gives you the ability to control a camera's um, settings, such as the uh, a wide dynamic range or any settings the camera would have built into it. Uh, previously, you'd have to be up the ladder with a monitor and pressing the button on the camera itself to make the settings, setting changes. Now you can be at the recorder and making the changes with the recorder and a mouse or whatever you're using to control it with. In the box of the kit, you get the power supply, infrared remote control and AA batteries, USB mouse, software disk and printed operating manual. Okay, I'm just going to run through a basic setup with you now and show you how to get started and then another video later on will be uh, more in-depth about the different settings the recorder has and various advanced functions. Okay, so this is the, the screen you see when you first switch the machine on. This is your startup wizard. This will appear every time you put the machine power on. Uh, if you want to disable it, ha that happening, just click on this little box here and then select next. So this is the hard drive screen, just checking the hard drive's there, working okay, that's fine, don't need to touch that. If you do want to format it, you select and then hit format. Next is your record scheduler. This is the mode that the recorder will be in when you are recording. So this default mode is constant recording, so you can just plug it in, get it set up as we're doing now, and then it's recording constantly. If you want to set it up for motion, 
you have an option here of motion. You can click on that and that then turns this cursor into a motion thing. So every time you click on a block, it turns motion on. You can speed the process up by clicking and dragging. So this mode now is constantly recording and also motion as well. So it's gonna give you a constant record playback with little flex on the playback timeline. When, I'll show you that in a second, it's where motion is. If you only want to record motion, select green and turn the green off. So this mode is only going to record motion from Sunday to Sunday, Saturday, midnight to midnight. You can, if you wish, change individual days, individual hours. That's not a problem. You can have it do it whenever you like. Once you've set it up as you want, remember this is only camera one you've done, you can clone all the uh, settings from camera one to the other cameras by this here, this option here, or you can copy from a certain channel to another certain channel this way. Next up is the system configuration, this is your time and date. And your menu timeout. This is a, this is the setting how how quick the menu goes off the screen. So when you're having a fiddle around with it, set it to five minutes. It'll save it, keep disappearing. Next is your network configuration. The best setting for this for instant um, least hassle setup. Leave it on DHCP. Make sure that's enabled, and move on. Email configuration here. Well, I'm going to that just now, and likewise the DNS. So that's the basic setup done. The recorder time and date is set. The hard drive is working okay. It's on the network, and we're recording. <laughs>